You've likely heard the term artificial intelligence thrown around the last few years. AI is the ability of computers and machines to perform tasks humans can do, and it is all around us. For example, consider a typical bedroom. Gmail can auto-complete your sentences as you are writing an email. When you ask, hey Siri, what is the weather today? Your phone lights up to tell you the weather forecast. Alexa, along with other voice processing systems, can also parse audio input and complete tasks at your request. AI also has many commercial uses. Companies can decide who to interview and hire, and banks can approve or deny loan applications. If these algorithms are built correctly, they can increase the efficiency, reliability, and objectivity of decision-making processes. Let's take a closer look at how banks can use AI. More specifically, the bank uses machine learning, which is a branch of AI where algorithms learn a task by analyzing data instead of using explicit instructions. Let's say the bank knows from your application how many years of education you have completed. It also knows your spending habits from your credit card history. These data features, and many others, can be inputted to an algorithm that decides whether the bank should lend you money. This algorithm, in turn, has been trained with previous data of customers who have repaid their loans and those who have not. The training process uses trends and patterns from this input data to predict whether a person will repay the loan. Then, by comparing the predictions with the actual outcome, the algorithm can be fine-tuned. This can be done by changing the weights of nodes or including more hidden layers of data manipulations. So when the bank receives someone's application, it can use the algorithm to reliably decide whether a loan should be made. This is an example of binary classification, where only two types of results are possible. But real life is usually more complicated, and the bank can also create an algorithm that outputs continuous results. For example, it can output an interest rate, so someone with a higher chance of repaying will have a lower interest rate and vice versa. However, AI is not perfect. Because it only learns from a given set of data, the predictions it outputs are extremely reliant on what the training data was like. This means that bad data can give rise to a bad algorithm. But not only is the outcome of a bad algorithm unreliable, it can be unfair. How could an algorithm possibly be unfair? First, because data is accumulated over time, it may contain historical biases. Second, because data is also gathered and labeled by humans, it may contain societal biases. This means that an algorithm will be trained to follow the same biases and treat individuals differently because of their membership in a certain gender, race, religion, geographic location, or other types of demographic groups. Rather than looking for accurate indicators and trends, the algorithm will then be influenced by these sensitive attributes in the data and replicate or even amplify existing biases. Here are some examples of biased AI in practice. Natural language processing is a branch of AI that studies how machines understand and analyze human language. Because it is easier for machines to handle numbers rather than words, we represent words using vectors of numbers. These are called word embeddings. Here, we represent the embeddings as vectors in two-dimensional space. But the logic behind the embedding still work the same way. Meaning is captured by the direction and magnitude of the vector. So we can expect the words fairness and justice to have closely associated embeddings. However, researchers found in 2016 that commonly used word embedding frameworks contain disturbing gender stereotypes. An algorithm associated men with the terms doctor and computer programmer and women with nurse and housewife after it was trained on a news database. This isn't a trivial matter of counting pairs of words that occur together. In fact, the term male nurse even occurred more frequently than female nurse. Instead, the training process is able to extract associations, relationships, and biases that are embedded underneath the raw text. As a result, when natural language processing is used to understand an input sentence or provide word suggestions, the algorithm's output will be biased. This can get unfair in some settings. For example, if a company is hiring recent science PhD graduates and searches for candidates online, 
the search engine's natural language processing will try to understand its meaning and look for the closest match. But this means that a male graduate is more likely placed first, as science is more closely associated with male names. As a result, biases in word embeddings can not only reflect stereotypes, but also further amplify them. Bias training datasets can also be found in practice in facial recognition systems. Last summer, researchers published a new machine learning tool called Pulse that generated high-resolution images from low-resolution inputs. People quickly found that Pulse generated white faces much more often than faces of people of color. The fact that this tool was published without any researchers noticing this trend of bias showed how the problem of bias goes far deeper than any dataset or algorithm. It's an issue that requires conscious awareness and consideration throughout the building process. In another striking demonstration of the problem, in 2018, researcher Joy Bulamwani found that facial recognition systems were not able to detect her face until she put on a white mask. Subsequent research by her and other researchers found that many prominent facial recognition systems, including those built by IBM, Amazon, and Microsoft, were much less accurate for women and dark-skinned individuals. This discrepancy in bias is a big problem when facial recognition is already so prevalent today. Mm -hmm.